article I chose to summarize um, is The Rise of Blended Learning by Ian Quellen, um, a writer for the Smithsonian Magazine. In the article, uh, Quellen discusses the introduction of blended learning into the Washington, D.C. school district. Uh, specifically, he starts with an example of an elementary school, uh, Stanton, where teachers are using a personalized math program called ST Math. So students spend about 45 minutes a day on the program, all tackling different levels of problems. Um, during this time, the teachers rotate through the room, helping the students when they stumble on given problems, thus giving the students a personalized level of math instruction. Um, when the time runs out, devices are packed away and pushed to another classroom, and the rest of the day proceeds without computers. This is a good example of a loosely organized and blended classroom. Quellen goes on to explain, uh, due to the different variations of blended learning, it's pretty hard to determine exactly how many schools use it. There's really no firm dividing line on where blended starts and stops. So it's difficult to figure out how many schools nationwide are actually practicing it. However, he did find some t statistics that state currently 14,000 school districts offer some kind of variation of blended learning. In the article, uh, Michael Horn, a blended learning expert, was interviewed. He goes on to explain he wants people to see blended learning as students having part of their day learning online while in the brick and mortar in order to get some type of personalization during the day. According to the author Quellen, there are four types of blended learning. Rotational, flex, self-blend, and enriched virtual. Uh, the rotational category is where students alternate between working online and working in the traditional classroom during the same course of study, um, usually during math or English language arts classes. Um, a self-blend model is where students take one or two online courses. This is often advanced placement or credit recovery. These courses are to supplement their class education. Um, the two other categories seem to be a bit more specialized. Um, we have the flex model. Um, this model gives each student a uniquely tailored schedule of online lessons, um, group work, and traditional classroom lessons all mixed together. It's a much more involved model. And then we have the enriched virtual this is where students get their instruction online, but periodically meet with a teacher. This is more often seen in like a, a college. Uh, these four vary greatly, but the author believes that blended continues. Most will gravitate towards the rotational and the self-blend. The author also interviewed Mika Wick, who is the director of the City Bridge program, who is um, bankrolling the technology for the DC schools. Um, Mr. Wick is very excited uh, that the blended learning is giving teachers the opportunity to help students that are at various levels at the same time. This is again where that personalization comes in. Um, he also notes that the blended learning has been a great benefit um, where demographics lead to widespread disparities in the students' abilities, which I think um, really relates well towards our district. Now, to close the article, uh, the author does warn that even Blended's most outspoken proponents um, war in the field is too new to know what works in regards to blended learning and what does not. But there have been many very positive results so far. He used the example of the school uh, Stanton in the Washington school districts. Um, the school was on the brink of shutdown in 2010 um, for their abysmal performance. Um, but since they have implemented the blending uh, through the past three years, the school has doubled its percentage of students proficient in reading and tripled its percentage of students proficient in math. And the last slide is simply just um, the MLA citation for the article.